regions and the southern mountaineers. It was absolutely vital to the survival of the nation's oldest inhabitants, Native Americans. The first music heard in America came from the voices of American Indians who, for centuries, had followed the traditions of ancestors by celebrating all aspects of their lives by singing. In fact, for much of the 19th and early 20th centuries, Native songs were banned from reservation schools under the control of white culture. Older members of the tribe quietly passed on the music to their children and grandchildren at nights and on weekends. This was a desperate attempt to keep a culture alive. Whether it was a drum with a war party, whether it was singing a baby to sleep, certainly. The first music in America was American Indian music. I can travel around the world for all my life, and I would never find something so unique as where I come from. I think in the uniqueness is what makes us powerful and beautiful. And I think that is, to some extent, the evolution of Roots music, is that we have learned to accept one another. Forget the similarities. Let's teach each other through our differences. The drums represent the heartbeat. So each time a song is sung and the people are there, it becomes the center of the universe. Language has always been a big part of our lives, our daily lives. If it wasn't for music, uh, our tribe would not be here now, along with our language, of course. If a child in a school sang one of their songs, the supervisors would wash their mouth with soap or punish them in other ways if they persisted. So it was literally beat out of the children, the language and the songs. When I was born in 1936, only Indian people over 55 could dance. That was one of the first ways of cutting the younger generation off the culture. Then they took the children out of the homes and put them in these boarding schools. They were like military prisons is what they were. Education wasn't the, the real issue, although that's why they sent us there, the government. To us, it wasn't about education. It was about getting through this, this real, to us, horrific time where we were ripped off our family we couldn't sing our songs, we couldn't speak our language. And you know we were going through a lot at that time when, when all that happens. You're not allowed to speak uh, native language. You're not allowed to dress that way anymore. You're not allowed to sing those songs. You're not allowed to do those dances. Everything was like, oh, you're just not allowed to do that. The government really banned Indian religions in the 1890s uh, after the ghost dance and Wounded Knee Massacre. The ceremonies survived by our elders doing the ceremonies over the hill, around the bend, in a sense, in the woods. The efforts of Nellie Two Bulls and her late husband have helped rescue the music of the Lakota people. The Two Bulls, they have taught and left behind for generations many of the songs that that uh, we hold so important to our culture, our ceremonies. Today in her 80s, she continues to work with children. Your voice has to be go above many fingers. Also during the 20th century, the powwow emerged as an intertribal celebration of Native American music and dance. In the powwows nowadays, they do what they call contest dancing. Well, the young kids get paid for it, it, it brings around them to learn the songs. It brings them around to learn the dances. What the idea was that people could come and show their stuff. They could say, listen to the songs that, uh, that we know. Listen to the dances that we're doing. Look at, you know, you know how we're decked out. It provides an opportunity for us to practice our, our traditional values of respect and generosity. It gives us an opportunity to um, exchange 
in terms of music, in terms of um, dance. Powwow has evolved into an intertribal exchange celebration. Because the drum is in a circle, we dance in a circle. Our life is in a circle. So the drum represents forming that circle. And we all dance around the drum. And then when we dance, we are dancing and our feet are hitting the Mother Earth. We are speaking to Mother Earth with our feet. The powwows became the social way of all Indian tribes to come together. We were riding horses around the powwow, the circle and everything is between the camps and all the people were camped out and it was such a time and the closest that you felt to the old way, the old days. And in that day, and they, as they still do, the dancers put cedar in the moccasins and they do a prayer to step in the, in, in the circle and you go into the spirit world and dance again. Our culture, we were always roaming past, we were following the buffalo, and today we follow the powwow. It's a never-ending battle for us to try to maintain who we are as a people. You don't see our music on MTV. You don't see our music being glamorized. And so it makes the challenge that much more greater for us to instill that pride in our own culture, in our own music. Beginning in the 1960s and 70s, Native American music began to blend with other strands of roots music, such as folk and country. Singers like Floyd Westerman began to write protest music that addressed the concerns of the American Indian Movement, which confronted the Bureau of Indian Affairs at Wounded Knee. You put me in your boarding school, make me learn your white man rule, be a fool. Oh, 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 oh. There is something in Floyd's music that really resonates for me, because I hear the the coming together of these worlds, of the native world and the country. Floyd Westerman, you know, the subject of his songs, are, it's about, you know, native themes. Um, the sound of his voice, you know, has a very traditional quality to it. But you can tell that some of his influences, this is a guy who has crossed paths with the music of Johnny Cash. You make me leave my home, my friend I think I'll go back there again Wounded knee, I want to be free oh, 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 oh. Wait a In the 80s, a small record label, Canyon Records, featured Native American virtuoso flautist R. Carlos Nakai and began selling his cassettes and CDs at trading posts. To date, Nakai has sold millions of albums and in the process has researched and preserved a huge body of traditional flute music. The flute was originally a solo instrument for men and it was used a lot in terms of uh, courting. A uh, man would play a song that both he and his uh, intended knew and loved, and she would know it was him and be delighted by the serenade. The sound of the flute has always been something that's intrigued me quite a bit. I also spend a lot of time thinking about how that sound is affecting me, letting it influence me too, so I'm actually playing myself.
I did a collaboration with these guys, Primo and Mike, their name, and they are peyote men. They are from the NAC, the Native American Church, which for, I don't know, over a hundred years has lived underground. Because it's always been illegal, they've always been behind those trees or behind that mountain over there. It's just like in the last couple of years that it's being accepted as another religion. It comes from the Southwest originally, but it has adapted itself to local customs, local music in different places. It's another intertribal gathering because you'll see people who are Delaware, Shawnee, Comanche, uh, Cherokee, all in the same teepee or earth lodge. The music is the most important part, and particularly if the sponsor of a peyote meeting is someone who is in need, then everyone focuses their energy to try to help that person. And yes, Christianity comes into it uh, to a very great extent. The water drum is unique to North America. It's a tanned hide. It's tied with a number of stones around the top, and some say that represents crown of thorns that Christ wore. The religion, the music, the whole thing, when you, when you know about it, it's one of the most beautiful and pure approaches to paying respect to your higher power that you've ever heard. Although Native American music was the first music made in this country, it wasn't until recently that it was recognized as an important form of American roots music. Younger musicians like Robert Mirabel of the Taos Pueblo are mixing traditional Native American with other strands of American music to create new forms of roots-based music. Just like the early country and blues artists did at the beginning of the century, Mirabel is using the media available to him including television, to bring his music to the attention of other Americans. When I see Robert Mirabel, I'm amazed at the creativity and the use of all the traditional elements to create something new. creating what I call a Native American rock opera, like a modern ceremony. And the dance epitomizes who I am as a Native man, as well as a man of this time and of this age. And all my life as I was growing up, looking at the TV, I wanted to see somebody that was like me. If you don't see that in this age of information, then who do we become? We emulate other people and other societies and we become what we really aren't. Although almost wiped out at the beginning of the 20th century, Native American music is flowering 100 years later and is responsible for creating new cutting edge forms of music that will continue to evolve and define American music. When it comes right down to who am I, 
Your music identifies who you are. Your Indian music identifies who you are. That drum identifies who you are. When the very, very small young kids dance, it's such a beautiful thing to see today that we were almost exterminated. It's such a great feeling to just, just to watch them and see that that'll be going on. And even when I'm gone, that'll still be going on. It's a great feeling. All right, here we go now. Two inner tribals, two inner tribals, people. Then we're gonna go into a memorial dance contest here. Starting in the 1970s, large government festivals like the Smithsonian Folklife Festival began to put forth the idea that American music is comprised of many diverse ethnic strands. Of course, new forms of roots music continue to evolve as new immigrant cultures mix the folk music of their homelands with strands of American music. Evolution exists even within the original forms of roots music. Virtuoso Bela Fleck has taken the banjo to new heights with his band, the Flecktones, one of the first integrated bands on the bluegrass circuit. The Flecktones are a mixture of acoustic and electronic music with a lot of roots in um, folk and bluegrass as well as funk and jazz. That's about as simple as I can do it. I would also say it's a melting pot uh, where a lot of music just sort of